Hey everyone, it's Michael from Chess Lifestyle, and for today's video, uh, what I really wanted to tell you about was how exactly should you give a chess lesson on the internet? Like, there aren't any tutorials about how to do this, and I really learned how to give lessons using Lee Chess, a mixture of Lee Chess and Zoom, um, through just gaining experience, trial and error, and um, some other people who learn from someone else, who learn from someone else, basically <laughs> passing down the ropes uh, for me to be able to teach my lessons online as well. And I feel like being able to teach lessons in chess is not only a great way to kind of uh, fund uh, any chess endeavours you may have, but also um, if you're thinking of, uh, let's say, training with someone, if you remember, well, <laughs> I doubt and, uh, most of you are have, were watching like really old videos, but there was one old video that I made about like training partners in chess and a method that you can use uh, where one of you is the teacher, one of you is the student, and you swap uh, back and forth. And yeah, I feel like um, uh, Lee Chess Studies really can facilitate um, this kind of uh, training partner activity. So yeah, just lots and lots of potential with Lee Chess. Um, so I thought I would uh, show you um, all of that jazz. Right, so this is LeeChess.org. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, I mean, I feel like most of you will probably know by now, but leeches.org is a free website. You can really do anything on here that you could do on chess.com or chess24. And, uh, yeah, it's all for free. So, I would really recommend when you're, um, trying to give a lesson on leeches that you make use of a study feature. So you go to learn, you click study, and you'll see this huge page of all these different studies. Now, these studies are public studies that members of the Lee Chess website have created for anyone to click on and learn from. But what you'll want to do is uh, scroll down to see where it says My Private Studies and click on that. And here you can see all of the studies that you have made. So, um, as you can see here, I've got lots of uh, chess lessons that I've um, made for my students. Um, and yeah, just so people know, like I, I normally um, have my uh, prep on a separate Leeches account, otherwise it just gets too overwhelming, too many studies. Um, and uh, another interesting thing as well that a lot of people don't know is that you have something called topics in Leeches, and topics, you have all these different topics, and when you save uh, your study, which I'll show you how to do, you can actually um, classify it under a certain topic so that if you're trying to structure your stuff, I did try this for a bit, but it made it easier to even have a separate Leeches account for prep. But uh, yeah, if I click on um, uh, something like Dylan here, then I see all of these uh, pages or studies linked to Dylan so I can, you know, find things a bit more easily. But anyway, uh, before talking about that, let's just first talk about what a study is. So a study, um, uh, you can call the study whatever you like. Let's say uh, lessons with the chess lifestyle fans. Woohoo! And uh, you can then change visibility. So normally I like to click invite only because I don't like, you know, anyone being able to join my study as I'm giving a lesson online. So you want to make it invite only. Um, Cloning means whether the student or people in the study can actually uh, duplicate the study. So I, I don't really bother with that. One thing I would say is if you're teaching juniors, you want to turn the computer analysis to only yourself and mm, opening Explorer up to you, but maybe only yourself as well. So that um, your kid uh, that you're teaching or whoever you're teaching uh, doesn't just click on the engine and um, <laughs> cheat with whatever um, like position or game you're trying to show them. So uh, that's that. And yeah, you'll be asked for a chapter. So generally I like to just uh, make the first chapter lesson one, uh, that's just a blank. And as you can see up here, um, I've got the uh, Stockfish engine uh, that's available to me, but my student would just have nothing here. They wouldn't be able to see this. And same with the opening book. They wouldn't be able to see the opening reference. Um, now, the benefit of using a leecher study over to the as opposed to the traditional um, just share your screen on Skype 
is that Leecher studies are fully interactive. So basically, uh, you will add, you will click on where it says one member, and you'll click add members, and you'll add whoever you want to the study. So, uh, for instance, I will add um, Dylan. Uh, I think this is his username, and you'll see him pop up here. Now, the next thing what you'll want to do is click this red button where it says contributor and make it green. And when you do that, uh, Dylan becomes a contributor, which means um, he will be able to make moves on this board and it will appear on my board. Um, so uh, when I make a move here, this will show up on Dylan's screen. And if Dylan made a move, uh, let's say E5, uh, it would show up on my screen. So that way it can be more interactive. And when you're giving an online lesson, I feel like it's really important, especially for kids, that there's an interactive element because otherwise it's too much listening and they're going to zone out and you're not really going to drive home the lessons you're teaching as much. So uh, I really like this interactive aspect of it. One thing you've got to make sure is that at the bottom of the board here, there are two words, sync and rec. Uh, synchronized and recording. So um, ah, it actually uh, tells you what this means. So sync basically means that uh, the position you're seeing on your screen is the same position as uh, your student uh, that they're seeing on their screen. So you want to make sure that they're both synced so that you're in time with each other. And rec basically means um, uh, when you make a move on your screen, uh, the moves are saved and that will also be the case for your student. So you want to both be uh, recording the moves and both be in sync. So make sure these are both a green tick. And you see if you click on them, there will be a red cross. So just make sure they're a green tick, make sure your student is a contributor, and yeah, you'll be able to give interactive lessons. So that's pretty much it. I mean, here are the tags. So you can uh, manage topics and uh, I can type in Dylan, apply, and then it will be under that umbrella of uh, types of lessons. Um, you can also add comments to the moves, which can be really useful, um, like this. And um, <laughs> you can add like annotations to your moves. So E5 uh, is definitely not um, taking the initiative or... Okay, I'm being very harsh on E5. E5 isn't the worst opening in the world. But um, yeah, you can add these annotations uh, so it can help. Ah, another very useful thing to note is that when you um, make a move, you can also draw arrows. So if you drag and right click, you can show uh, what a piece is doing. And ah, I just clicked on the square, right click to show a circle and drag for the arrow. So it's really useful when you're explaining concepts uh, that you can draw arrows, uh, click to show a circle. Uh, I believe you can even do like arrows of different color by holding Alt or Shift. Um, I don't really uh, do it because it's kind of too much hassle, but if you're super, uh, savvy, you can <laughs> uh, use the different arrows. Um, I think that's all I use uh, out of all of these options. I mean, the share tool is always extremely useful. You can either save um, the chapter, each, uh, each um, part is a chapter, and you can save them. Um, yeah, you can share the link of your study. Um, GIF is also really nice. You can actually um, when you play a game on Lee Chess or you make a study, you can actually save it as a GIF and it'll play out the moves as a GIF that you can send to someone. So that's kind of cute. Um, and yeah, that's really much it. Uh, I think that's all you'll need to actually give a lesson. I, I can show you some examples of lessons I've given. I hope my students won't mind. Uh, let's just let's just click on Olivier Summer Lessons. So. Um, as you can see, I have lesson one here, and I have like the contents of my lesson. Uh, also, part way through, sometimes if you want to add, uh, like, I, I don't know what I've done here. Chapter, what is going on here? Yeah, sometimes, um, let's say uh, this position, I'm trying to explain between a bishop and a knight. Like, part way through the lesson, I think it's quite useful sometimes to. Like, you might not have prepared this, but maybe if a topic of conversation comes up, what if the pieces are gone? And you can literally just create, add a new chapter. Um, ah, this is what I should explain as well. With adding a new chapter, you can uh, go to editor, and it will show you the position that you have on the screen currently, and you can quickly make some edits. So during the lesson, this can be a really fast way to just add 
an extra position that might be useful to explaining something. So that's the editor. If you just click empty, um, you get to choose the orientation, whether it's from white or black side. Um, if you choose the orientation, that will be the same for you and the student. But if you want your student to see the position from the opposite way around, you can ask them to... Well, actually it's probably easier to set the orientation, let's say this one, uh, to black. And then on your own side, you can click the letter F as a keyboard shortcut. Okay, <laughs> it's not working, but normally it does. I don't know why it's not working. Um, that's really odd. May uh, maybe I need to click on the board first. <laughs> okay, this is kind of embarrassing because the keyboard shortcut always works. So I'm not sure why it's not. But yeah, you should be able to click the letter F and it'll flip the board. Um... So yeah, um, yeah, so normally I separate it with lesson one. Sometimes I even add a new chapter and just draw some uh, lines like this to put in between, just so that um, I keep track of what I've taught and can separate it quite nicely. Um, and yeah, uh, that's really it. Um, the great thing about Leeches as well is that you can also challenge people. So, um, okay, I have hardly any friends online right now, but I could go to challenge and um, a great thing as well, you can uh, choose uh, not only uh, the different variants, but you can also choose from a position. And you can choose a position from uh, your lesson study that you've been making. So if there's a certain end game you're teaching, and then your kid is like um, talking back and say, ah, no, 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 I could beat you in this or whatever, then you can be like, okay, prove it. And you can set up the position, you can set a time control, and you can just challenge and play. So that's really, really nice as well. And it's super nice for um, if you're training with a partner as well. You can just practice a uh, certain end game or a certain position. So that's really useful too. So I think that's all my tips uh, for uh, giving a lesson on Lee Chess. Um, just to summarize, uh, you want to click on study. Uh, when you create your own study, make sure to make it invite only. Uh, once you make an invite only study, also turn the computer analysis off. Um, Make sure to uh, add the member, make them a contributor, and very importantly, make sure the sync and rec have a green tick. And if all of that is done, you'll be able to give nice interactive lessons on Lee Chess. So that's it, your crash course in giving chess lessons online. So hope that helps. Um, and yeah, see you around. Bye bye. Also, I just thought I'd show you, um, I got uh, a wooden board for my wooden pieces, which I've had a long time now. Uh, emphasis on the knights, like when I saw the knights, I was like, oh man, I got, <laughs> I got to get these. But yeah, like the, the board is super nice and uh, I'm definitely going to be doing some great studying on this.